today. These things seem to work so well, you hardly have to pay any attention to them at all. Not the car, the garage door. But doors, like all mechanical operating things in your home, need to be maintained every now and then. There's a lot of moving, sliding, and stretching parts here working in symphony with tight tolerances, high tensions, and electricity. They need occasional tweaking and maintenance. Or else. Or else what? The door won't open? So what? We count on things to run smoothly. And we count on our vehicles, we count on our appliances, we count on our heating and air conditioning, and we count on our garage door system. If it doesn't work and your car is stuck inside, then you can't make an appointment, you can't make work, you can't get the kids to school, and it's an emergency. In those rare situations where you're unable to get the garage door to work electrically, there's always a way to release the door and operate it by hand. Usually you'll have a release cord hanging down from your system. You simply give a little tug to this cord, which releases it, let go of the cord, and then operate the door by hand using your handles. The stored energy in the spring counterbalance system, combined with the weight of the garage door, will be very unforgiving if not approached with the proper tools and knowledge. One thing that we do see frequently is when a homeowner does try to work on these springs on their own, uh, they do get injured, and we know it because the blood trail starts here and then trickles its way on into the house. So what looks very innocent when the door is closed is actually an extremely dangerous portion of the garage door, an area that you really do want to stay away from. Anywhere up in here, where the spring mounts together to its mounting plate, or on the other end, where you apply this, the actual tension to, uh, both of those areas are very, very dangerous. And what we do to try to inform you about this is to provide these caution tags or warning tags to let you know, stay clear, it'll hurt. Today's electric garage door openers can do so much more than just open and close the doors. Extra buttons can turn lights on and off start your coffee pot or control other electrical appliances. Children need to be taught to keep their fingers out of section joints and their hands away from the door. They need to to know not to play under an open garage door or near one. Also that the transmitters in the car and the control buttons on the wall are not to be played with or to be touched. In general, what you want to teach your children is the garage door system is not a toy. In 1993, there was a change to the garage door opener industry and a requirement to have a photoelectric sensors installed with all garage door openers. If you've ever had a situation where your garage door opener will not close the door, it may simply be a matter of those sensors being out of alignment. These brackets can very easily be adjusted by hand. A very simple little adjustment to this sensor might be all you need to do to get your garage door working again. So try checking that out first before paying a professional door dealer to come out and take care of it for you. Another little tip for uh, your garage door opener is the manufacturers provide for up to 100 watts of lighting capacity. Why not put in a 40 to 60 watt appliance grade light bulb? It'll save a little energy and it'll light up the garage just as well. But for those of you who have the older type garage door where the springs stretch either vertically on the sides or horizontally on the sides, uh, a very important thing to have is a re safety retention cable within the coils of the spring. When these springs break, and they will, a lot of damage can occur. We've seen them embedded in the front walls of your house. We've seen them pushed up into the uh, attics of your garage. We've even seen a lot of damage to your cars. So a very important thing to have a professional door dealer come out and take care of 
is to make sure that these safety retention cables are in place and properly installed. Uh, one of the most common concerns people have is that their garage door is getting noisy. And some of this stuff you can take care of very easily yourself. With just a regular aerosol lubricant, we recommend that you, about every six months or so, go through and spray the rollers and then also the hinge points like this. That in itself can reduce a lot of the noise that, that will develop and it's something that you can very easily do yourself. These doors are great and taken for granted. With a little respect and occasional inspection, they should keep working reliably and safely for years and years to come so that you can keep taking them completely for granted.